السلام عليكم أعزائي الطلبة ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is Dr. Khalid Jamil Kazim, and I will start with you medical parasitology lectures. This is the, this is the second lecture that we will continue with the uh, the introduction, the short introduction that already have given you in the first lecture, and in that lecture we. Uh, explain to you what the medical parasitology, parasitology is and how to deal with with this science how to deal with the parasitology how to uh, arrange the medical parasitology branch and segments already told you that the medical parasitology can be segmented or branch into two main branches medical protozoology uh, that science deals with the protozoa protozoa of a human and medical helminthology that deals uh, with the helminth of a human today we will continue with that introduction and give you some important aspects of medical parasitology here we make the comparison between the protozoa and helminth in terms of the size, uh, life cycle, uh, um, and other some uh, aspects like uh, pathogenesis and symptoms and drug of choice to treat them. So we here we see the protozoa and helmet. The protozoa are small unicellular organisms, so the uh, the size is different. Here is very small protozoa. Most of them is, most of them are small and unicellular organism. All uh, uh, the protozoa is smaller than helminth. So in terms of size, smaller than helminth. Unicellular organisms, uh, while the helminth is multicellular. Protozoa contain nucleus and functional organelles and produce quickly and sexually, asexually in the host. Host here is the human, but may have a sexual phase of their life cycle in another host or vector. While the helminth uh, are metozoa, larger multicellular organisms, normally visible to the naked eye, while the protozoa usually invisible in comparison to helminths. Helminths produce, reproduce sexually, usually within the host, and have pre-adult stage, <coughs> which are ova and larva, which live externally or in the other hosts, usually intermediate hosts. For the transmission of parasites, the transmission can be or requires a source or reservoir host, which may be human or animal. So the reservoir host can be animal or human. And this is very important to transmit the parasite from host to another one. The second uh, important thing is the route of infection. For example, ingestion, penetration, or insect vector. These are uh, the, the route of infection, route of infection for a human. So uh, the uh, infective states, infective states of parasite need to be ingested or penetrated or carried by insect vector to reach to human to start the infection. For the hosts, I already explained in the first lecture some uh, aspects or important notes about the host and the kind of host. But here the, I just remind you and repeat for you some of the important uh, notes about the kinds of the hosts. So, 
the the important one is the definitive and intermediate host the definitive host or can be also called uh, final host is that in which sexual reproduction occurs for example mosquitoes for malaria so inside the mosquitoes in the life cycle of malaria malaria uh, uh, undergoes sexual reproduction so we call the mosquito the final host or definitive host why because we detected the sexual reproduction inside this uh, mosquitoes or in which the mature forms of parasites occur so we have two options to decide whether this definitive host or another host we have two uh, uh, two parameters we can decide the reproduction and the the forms whether it's mature or uh, larval forms so i just repeated when sexual reprodu reproduction sorry occurs inside my <coughs> organism we uh, decide that this organism is definitive host for parasites or if we uh, find or detect mature forms of parasites inside this organi organism we also decide that this organism is definitive host for the parasites we have an uh, example for another uh, option uh, human for African trypanosomiasis in human the adult uh, the mature forms of the trypanosomiasis trypanosoma okay so that we call human is the definitive host for this parasite also we have the intermediate host is another animal essential to the completion of the life cycle usually animal that needed to complete the life cycle of parasites and we call that host is intermediate host for example snails for schistosomiasis and schistosomiasis uh, uh, the snail serves as intermediate host and carry the larval stage of parasites how to do how to disease a human how to how uh, the this parasite can make disease in human parasite cause disease in human by different ways and we here we take it and study and explain to you mm, the first one is mechanical effects for example hydatid cyst uh, in, the, in the first lecture we mentioned that hydatid cyst can make a mechanical effects by the uh, the its size because the large large size of the cyst can make a mechanical effect in the different organs of a human or by invasion and destruction of host cells as in malaria or allergic or inflammatory immune reaction by the host to the parasites for example toxocoriasis and trypanosomiasis we have another way to uh, cause the disease in human that is competition of a specific uh, specific nutrients for example Lactobotherium uh, latum this cystoid parasites uh, make a, a competition uh, of vitamin B12 with the human or maybe maybe no obvious disease uh, such as in tinea saginata in humans uh, tinea saginata and tinea solium these are two cystoid make no obvious disease and usually very slight infection occur in human sometimes with no symptoms detected how to diagnose the parasites how to diagnose 
diagnosis in parasitic diseases depends on the first history of exposure and the clinical patterns of illness in the patient. This is the first one. The second one, identif identification of the parasite itself and excreted. Uh, I mean identification of different uh, states of parasites in human, usually in stool, urine, blood, or specific tissues. These are the most locations that the parasites look, uh, located and can be found. Indirect, indirect evidence of the parasite by testing the patient's blood for antibodies or detection of parasite antigens in clinical specimens. These uh, two techniques uh, together called serological uh, techniques. Uh, uh, bo both, of, both of them called uh, serological or immunological techniques to, to detect, detect parasites in, usually in uh, blood of a human. The last one is detection of parasite DNA or RNA in clinical specimens. We call this techniques is molecular techniques. Uh, depends mainly uh, on detection of DNA or RNA of the parasites in uh, a human body or human infection. In the, fair, in the, in the uh, next lectures, I will uh, give you the uh, uh, medical hematology. I will start with, with you the medical parasitology. Also, we call it worms. Here, I give you the uh, yeah, uh, branch, the main branch of worms or helminths. We started from the right to left, from the symbol to the most complicated helminths. The first one is trematode and cystode, and the last one, nematodes. The trematodes is the unsegmented parasites and the morphology is leaf-like or, or slender, uh, slender, uh, slenderical. Uh, reproduction also we will study it extensively and the infection mainly by larval stage enteric intestinal tract sometimes through skin. This is the route of infection for the parasite. While on cystode, uh, the, uh, the cystode is very long, worms, uh, segmented, and bosses, collex, snake, and proglotids. These are the segments of uh, body or worms body. Uh, sometimes multiplication, this is the most important things about the cystode. Sometimes multiplication within larval forms. So we expect to see some forms or some larval forms of cystode and the infection generally by insisted larva. So we expect to, uh, to see the insisted larva in the life cycle of cystodes. And the last one, uh, the nematodes, the most complicated uh, helminths or worms, the nematodes, which are unsegmented and uh, the sexes is separated so we see the male and female of parasite and the infection by occurred by ingestion of eggs or penetration of larvae through the surfaces or can be by arthropod vector or ingestion of insisted larvae uh, this is the the, the segments or the mm, the branch of worms that uh, we are planning to take it and give it to you and and study it in the next uh, weeks and uh, we will start with nematodes and cystode and the last one is nematode uh, start to from the next lecture we will start with nematode and we will uh, take one by one in details and we start with we continue with cystode and nematode 
I hope in this lecture we uh, just explained a short and uh, short introduction and gave it to you the most important points about the uh, medical parasitology and worms so any questions and any discussions notes don't hesitate to send me or contact with me all the best for you and see you in the next lectures wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh